I'm Eric with Cinematics. I'm here with Joe Bagos, the writer and director of Christmas Bloody Christmas. And first of all, I got to tell you, uh, when we got the we got the screener for this, I'm like, oh, Christmas Bloody Christmas. You know, I, I always like uh, the the horror Christmas themes. Um, but then I found out, oh, this is a guy that did VFW, and that on our podcast, that was like one of our top movies that year. And so I was very excited. And since I got you here, I also wanted to tell you um, one of my favorite things about VFW is you have like great character introductions. Like you got the Bear Jew from Inglorious Bastards, Willy Wonka, where he's kind of coming out falling. Like y'all have all these great uh, character introductions. You in VFW, you had one of the best ones with William Sadler just popping up out of the back back of the uh, bed of the truck. So I got to ask, was that... Was that in the script or was that just something you came up like as a funny gag to do on the day? Um, that was in the script. And uh, I actually didn't think that Sadler would do it because I was doing the shot in a one where the, the truck comes in and lands and we zoom in. So it's like he's not just laying back there. It's like he's laying back there while fucking, you know, the truck's bouncing over curbs and taking turns and stuff. But, you know, to his credit, he was like, oh, it'll be a funny moment, it'll be a funny moment. So, yeah, he uh, he did it. Um, so that was in the script. Um, I'm. I, the script, that's the only script I didn't write, you know, that was um, my buddies Max and Matt McCarl wrote that. Um, and that gag was like one, you know, we improv a lot, I added a lot of stuff, but that gag was in the script from the very start, and uh, it stuck it all the way through to the shoot. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm glad I got to talk to you about that, because that was one of my favorite things. Um, another uh, favorite thing, because your only movies I've seen so far is this one, Christmas, Blood, Christmas, VFW. Now, after watching both these, I got to go back and hit up the rest of your stuff. But in both this and I think I like this one better in Christmas okay. Bloody Christmas is yours and I's musical taste seem to line up almost exactly. Uh, there was the uh, the bar scene where uh, in Christmas Bloody Christmas, I'm listening. I'm like, who the fuck is that band? I know that. I know that band. I had a, I, this is probably a complete faux pas, but I had to pause the movie, skip to the end credits. Oh shit. He put ISIS in this. This is fucking sweet. And of course you have Unsane and VFW, like, um, and now because of you, I'm kind of getting into Death Crux. Like, uh, I, I, I just- uh, The guitarist of Death Crux was the cinematographer on Christmas Buddy Christmas. Oh. So you should watch, uh, I made this movie called Bliss that actually has ISIS over a crazy freak out scene um, at the end that's amazing. And Death Crux plays a live show in Bliss during like, another freak out scene so i think you'd really like bliss <laughs> oh yeah that that was definitely next on my radar um yeah the, and also um so um yesterday we recorded the the new episode that's coming out where we review christmas bloody christmas by the way all high marks from all three of us but uh one of the things we kind of uh brought up beyond the the you know the fun watching the characters and then you know when they die kind of hits you certain characters do like asshole things so when they die still kind of feel bad for them but uh it, it reminded us a lot of uh, terminator and um it, it's almost like uh what, what christmas cheer over endo metal endoskeleton something like that yeah uh is please please tell me if anyone's gonna do a terminator movie can you please write and direct it because that would be awesome <laughs> Um, well, simultaneously, I would love to do a Terminator movie, but I, it's so much to live up to. I think the only way you can do a Terminator movie now is if you just make it like, you know, not like this, but like, you know, just a ground, a super gnarly grounded, like small scale movie. Like, you know, I think that we're over the kind of there's nowhere to go beyond Terminator 2. You know, you definitely got to go back to the basics and just make a gnarly movie. So, you know, I don't know. I would I would maybe do it if I was allowed to do that, you know, kind wow. of just crazy with it. I, I would say you already did because this is this is probably my favorite Terminator three. <laughs> this might as well be, but um yeah, yeah. yeah this, this and also uh this was was this Greg said this was shot on film and I don't have a real good eye for that, but uh, what what was the the what was the idea behind that and more importantly, where where do you get film nowadays? <clears throat> oh, this is my third movie shot on film. Um uh, Kodak still makes film, you know, uh, they got it at a, a place right here in LA, or you can uh, have it shipped. Um, so they're still spitted out film, you know, there's, there's actually more and more people shooting on film now we had a, a, uh, a shortage during this movie. So we had to, you know, kind of track down a bunch of stuff from around to get it because you know, like euphoria shoots on film, and there was some other big movie shooting on film. But um, I just love the way it looks. I love the aesthetic of it. Um, 
film is so fast now, like the film stocks and the lenses that it looks, you know, you can shoot it just like you would digital with low light. And um, I think that the final product just looks beyond the grain, like the way it reacts to light and all that. And um, it helps, you know, whether or not people uh, can tell like with their eye, I think subconsciously it makes the uh, performances more organic. It makes the effects more organic. It covers up lack of uh, budget in certain areas, you know, production design, even though this, we had really rich production design, but there's just something about the whole feel and aesthetic and look of it that um, I think just elevates almost every element of the movie to me. And, you know, the cost of it is not, not much compared to what you get out of it in my eyes. Yeah. Also, um, uh, Riley Dandy and Sam, is, is it Sam Delic? Delich? I, I still fuck it up. I think it's Delic. Yeah. Delic. Um, they had great chemistry in this. And um, Riley, especially, uh, I mean, hell, going back to the Terminator, like the Sarah Connor, like she's not quite the Sarah Connor character, but she's got like her character is like that really strong character in this. And I loved her in this. Where did you find her and how did you get uh, where did you find him as well? And like um, how, how much went into finding like their chemistry or was that just a happy accident? Uh, both of them um, came through all the audition process and they both knocked me out, you know, with their initial auditions. And then, you know, I kind of went through, worked with them each a little bit more through subsequent meetings before I decided to actually cast them. I never got to get them in the same room. So it was hard to tell the chemistry, but like I knew I could tell from the way that they were playing the dialogue and the way that they were riffing certain things that um, they we would have all we all kind of would have been on the same page and got together. And, you know, thankfully, my instinct was right because they, you know, uh, hit it off pretty quickly and um the, their chemistry and their reading of the character and how they inhabited the words that I wrote really elevated it you know with the wrong casting it could have just made the dialogue sound yeah. insufferable <laughs> also like uh, I guess speaking of characters um you do the you do the thing in this movie where um like the, there's certain characters that like oh they're definitely they're definitely uh just going to be bloody meat by the end of this and then there's other ones that you're not sure and then so like uh, you'll, you'll kill off certain people early that you might not suspect would be killed off early. And then that kind of adds stakes. So what's kind of your thoughts on that just in general? Uh, yeah, I agree. I like um, I, I don't like going through movies where it's like there's no tension because like, oh, this person might survive. This person might. So, I mean, obviously there's you know, the lead character is never going to like die before the end of the movie, unless it's psycho. So like, you need to give an element of danger, like, will they die at the end? You know, they're not gonna die before then, but let's set up the stakes enough where, oh, everybody's disposable. Everybody can go. And I also like when, even when the characters survive, they get to the end of the movie and they're just like bloody and beaten and they're never going to be the same. And like, they're dragging themselves around and they're visibly, you know, fu like fucked up. Like, I love that. So I kind of like setting up a world where, yeah, nobody is safe. Um, and I also like setting up like something beyond disposable characters that you know are going to get killed because obviously, you know, the secondary characters in any slash movie are going to get knocked off quick. But like if we do give them a role or a life to inhabit and we give them a little bit more than that and then you start picking up these people that range in importance in the story, like, yeah, it, all bets are off and maybe fucking, you know, the final girl ain't going to make it till the very end. Who knows? Yeah. Well, I, I could talk to you forever. Uh, but this is wrapping up. But I got one last thing. Uh, Bruce wanted me to ask um, if there was any thoughts of getting King Diamond's No Presents for Christmas into the soundtrack. And uh, follow up to that, is there any plans on releasing like a, a soundtrack for Christmas, Bloody Christmas? Because I I love every song on this on this movie. Um, no, we didn't even try for King Diamond because of our budgetary limits. We actually tried for Run Rudolph Run from Lemmy and Billy Gibbons. And even that was like, way the fuck out of our oh. price. um unfortunately maybe for the sequel if we get a little bit more money i can get um some of my favorite you know the very select few christmas songs i have in there uh there's not going to be a soundtrack for uh the movie like in the sense where the songs will be there like that kind of soundtrack but they are going to release um the the score on a, okay on lp and uh cd um although i think my other movies people have done it i don't know if they've done it on this yet but on spotify usually somebody will put together a, an official soundtrack playlist of the movie they'll track down all the songs um but uh yeah that's that's kind of the uh, deal with that I, I i hope we get more money though I, I my dream is to uh get a really fat um music licensing budget for one of my movies so i can actually put in you know like all my favorite music that's not like an indie band you know i do love yeah. all the music in this, but they're very much you know I'm, I'm not being i'm not able to secure motorhead or anything yeah. like that. 
Well, I, I think you're killing with the the indie bands. Like like I said, our our tastes kind of converge a lot, and I I'm enjoying all of them. And um, what's uh, so we got Bliss, The Mind's Eye, and Almost Human um, as your three previous movies before v, VFW. Yep. And are all those available as well? Yeah, they're all available. Uh, what is that? I don't know. Almost Human and Mind's Eye are both streaming on like Tubi and maybe hulu i don't know they're around they're definitely on itunes and on blu-ray and all that bliss is everywhere bliss is on amazon prime shutter arrow player uh tubi fucking it's on like five different things and it's also on blu-ray um bliss is the one that you know bliss and vfw and christmas buddy christmas i think are my my three best movies uh so i would definitely check out bliss um as soon as possible oh that i definitely will well th- thank you joe for joining me and i wish we could talk for hours and just go over uh early 2000s metal <laughs> and, well, we'll have a lot to talk about in the next one uh so oh damn straight for sure <laughs>